Good morning. I think today's video is pretty cool and I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. I'm all about not over accessorizing. I find that the people who spend the most time and energy and thought accessorizing for a new hobby or an existing hobby are often the people that do the least with that hobby. Now when it comes to grafting, you can, like I would say, if I went to someone's house, and I've done this many times, and uh, they had a fruit tree and I wanted to do a little bit of grafting, I can usually find what I need at their house, even if I didn't bring anything with me. The hardest thing is probably going to be to find a sharp knife, but then if they have a knife at all, I can get that sharp and use it, and I usually have a knife with me. So we're going to go through all the different things you need for grafting and to do successful grafting and all the sorts of household things that you can use and why you don't really need anything else actually. Now I buy a lot of things. I buy grafting wax. I usually get this tape. It's not really tape, it's just plastic strips. I have a grafting knife, but I graft a lot. So it's worth it for me to have that stuff. It's very convenient, it works well. But for most people, especially just to get started, you don't really need to accessorize much, if at all. So the first thing you need to do is we need cuttings. You don't even need clippers. Clippers are nice. I love my clippers. They're always in my back pocket this time of year for doing all my pruning and grafting. But you can just use whatever knife you're going to use. You can take your cuttings with a knife easily. And once you're, you know, obviously you're going to make your grafts with a knife. And then once you're done, you need to like cut it off at a butt or something. No problem. Just use a knife. You don't need clippers. Clippers out. For storing scions, you really don't need much of anything. All you really need is a plastic bag. If I'm gonna to get to grafting these within a month, all I really have to do is put them in this plastic bag, squish out the air, seal it up, roll it up so there's not like a lot of extra air in there, and then put it in the fridge. I could also put in literally just a few drops of water, like dip my fingers in water and just flick it once. You know, you know, two or three drops is plenty, even one drop. If I'm going to store them longer, something damp like damp sawdust or damp rotten wood. I went out just now and I collected two different kinds of rotten wood. And this just acts as a moisture reservoir, but it doesn't make the scions or the bag wet, so the scions won't rot. So just throw a handful of that in there if you're going to keep them longer. You could use sawdust. I don't recommend using paper. I know a lot of people use it and get away with it, but it does grow mold really easily and things like rotten wood and sawdust don't grow mold as easily because they contain natural antimicrobial compounds. But for short-term storage, all you really need is a plastic bag. And a refrigerator helps. If you don't have a refrigerator, you can take these and just bed them in or bury them in the same stuff. Uh, damp sawdust, this is rotten wood, this is forest duff, just like the stuff below the, the big leaves on the forest floor. There's kind of the stuff that's half rotten, leaf mold it's often called. Here's another type of rotten punky wood that some woodpeckers were removing from a tree. And that's good for also keeping your um, rootstock stored. So you may have to store your rootstock for a little while before you get to grafting it or planting it. You can take any of this stuff plus old potting mix uh, or mix all of that stuff together. Anything that's going to be not sopping wet and will breathe a little bit and allow a little bit of air circulation but will keep the roots damp. And then just bed the roots into that until you can get to them. And if you're storing scions like that, just put them on the north side of a building so that they stay nice and cool. You can have a reasonable freeze with like ice on top of your buckets and stuff and it's not going to hurt um, most of the temperate fruit trees. But if it's super cold, then you might want to put that in your garage or something like that. Okay, so let's say we have our rootstock and our scions, and you may be grafting onto an already growing tree too, but this is just an example. And we need to graft. So we need a knife, for sure. But you don't need a grafting knife. I own a grafting knife. This knife costs about $17 on Amazon. It's a very nice knife. I like it a lot. It's sharpened on one side, which offers you just a little bit more control when you're making cuts. But if you're just going to do a little bit of grafting, there's really no reason to own one of these at all. And in fact, you can get the equivalent of this Swiss Army knife, which has all kinds of cool little tools and is a great little carry pocket knife, 
with a saw blade, which this one doesn't even have, for $18. Um, I have it listed in, or 19, I think. I have it list, listed in my Amazon store. So there's like a $1 difference and you get all this other stuff. And really, it's just not gonna make that much difference. If I walked out to do a bunch of grafting and I had everything with me and realized I didn't have my, my little grafting knife here, but I had this in my pocket and it was sharp, which it isn't always, um, I would just use this. As you can see, I can make perfectly good, nice flat cuts with it. No problem. And it's not even razor sharp right now. So any of these would work for grafting. These are just a random assortment of kitchen knives I happen to have laying around. They need to be sharp. That's a different story. These, of course, have disposable blades, so they're always sharp. The only thing about these utility knives is some of them have a lot of wobble. So this one has a fair amount, and that can affect how easy it is to um, use them, but you can make them work. This one is nice because it has a lock on the side, so it makes the blade extra rigid, so that's a little bit better. Not my favorite, but there's people who use these um, exclusively for grafting, so they're totally fine, not a problem. Again, make sure they're sharp. For sharpening, if you don't have sharpening stone, you can glue a sandpaper to a board or a stiff piece of cardboard like this and just use that. And that's just, you know, sharpening is a whole nother story, so I can't really go into that too much, but there's one little expedient you could use. All I'm saying is that chances are you have a knife that will work if you can get it sharp. So I'll just make this graft right here. Sorry, this is a little awkward to do on camera just because of the angles. <clears throat> so let's say I've made my graft here. That's a terrible graft. Whatever, doesn't matter. We're just demonstrating. Okay, so I made my graft here and the main thing is you want a good tight fit. You, want, you don't wanna see a lot of uh, light coming through and you wanna make sure that the cambium layers are aligned and all that. That's a different story. We're gonna cover all that stuff real soon here. Now, the other thing that's gonna make this succeed is to make sure that there's good contact and that it doesn't move while it's healing because cells are gonna slowly start to grow in this space and then they're gonna to grow together and join. And while that's happening, it's very vulnerable. So if it's moved at all, it's gonna fail. The graft will fail. Now, traditionally, people use things like raffia, which is um, flat strips of fiber. This is some locust bark that I collected last year. So anything like that could work because what we really want is it's kind of like, think of it like a splint or a cast. You just really want to squish these two things together to make sure they have good contact. And that if any forces come along, like a little bit of wind or they get bumped, or something like that, that they're not going to move. So in the old days, people would use these natural fibers that don't stretch at all. They'd wrap those really tight and then they'd cover them with some kind of a grafting wax. Raffia was really popular because it comes in flat strips, but you can also just use regular string like this and just wrap that nice and tight. Um, but all of those things, typically you're gonna wanna put grafting wax over the top of. These days we have stretchy materials. So my preference is to use something stretchy. Most of the grafting tape options are stretchy. This is an exception right here. This is sold as grafting tape and it's actually a cloth fabric. It doesn't stretch and I don't actually like it that much because if you use anything that doesn't stretch and you forget to come along and cut that free at some point, uh, it will constrict the tree and the tree will kind of get choked off. So I use this stuff. It's just a, a strip of plastic and it stretches enough that you can get a nice tight wrap, but then as the tree grows, it stretches with the tree. It doesn't have any sticky stuff on it. You just wrap it and then tie it off. There's also a version of this that's thicker that is green and people use that to like tie their tomato plants to a trellis or stuff like that. And that stuff works okay, but it's more likely to constrict because it's about twice as thick as this. You can also use tape. 
You can use electrical tape. It's nice and stretchy. It does a great job. It sticks to itself. The only thing is when you peel it off, sometimes you'll take some of the outer bark off with it. I've never seen it actually really hurt a graft. So the electrical tape works okay and a lot of people have it, but I think my favorite thing to use that's just like kind of a household item is strips of plastic bag. Just about the perfect plastic bag for this use is these bags that like uh, manure and potting mix and stuff like that come in. Since these are left out in the sun at stores like at a nursery or whatever, they're usually UV resistant. So they, they hold up pretty well. They're easy to cut, they're large, they're abundant. Uh, most gardeners already have them. And as you can see, it's just, it's just really easy to cut a bunch of strips out of these. So these are, you know, thick enough that you can stretch them a little bit before they break so you can get a nice tight wrap. They won't rot in the sun immediately. So you'll get, you know, a full season out of them. And they work great, see, perfect. You can't really do any better than that. This is, this is exactly what you need. It's totally sealed off. It's gonna keep all the moisture in. It, you know, if a bird or anything bumps this, it's gonna have to bump it pretty damn hard to break that graft. And then just tuck it like that and you're good to go. Now, obviously it doesn't have to be one of these, you know, bags of potting mix and stuff comes in. You can use other thick plastic bags. Think of like bags that you get if you go shoe shopping or something, you get these thick plastic bags, uh, shopping bags. Those are good. If the plastic is too thin, it'll tear when you're trying to stretch it. So later in the season, after this is all growing really well and you're sure it's healed, you can just come along with a knife and slice right down the side of that thing. And it'll just peel off like that. You could just leave it or peel it off and let it grow. I would warn against using duct tape. The glue is really, really sticky and it has fibers in it, so it's not gonna stretch at all. I think electrical tape, if you have it, is a much better option. I have used masking tape, if that's what you have. It can work, you can use it, go for it. It doesn't really stretch, but you can still get a good tight wrap with it and it's, it's absolutely fine to use. Just again, remember the goals. The goal is to have a nice tight, wrap that if it moves a little, it's not gonna break the, the young healing graft in here. So often that's gonna mean making multiple wraps. So like this feels a little wonky, I would just go back once or twice and wrap it again. Make sure it's nice and firm. Trim off stuff we don't want. Oops. Uh, we only really need uh, a couple of buds on here. Trim that off. Okay, so this is vulnerable to drying out and running out of food and stuff like that because it has to be self-contained. You know, it has to be independent until this heals and starts to feed water and nutrients up into here. So at the very least, it's a good idea to seal this cut because we've cut open the wood and all these um, tubules that carry the water and nutrients up are wicking water out the end right there. So for that, you can use a uh, number of household things. White glue works good. Um, that's clogged up, so I'm gonna use this. This is carpenter's glue, which is pretty much the same thing. I, I use them interchangeably. So just at least a little dab of that, but really, go ahead and coat the whole thing. Why not? Because that's going to keep water from leaving the bark, too. The only thing you need to worry about is that you don't put on something so thick that the buds can't break through it and grow. But trust me, they're pretty strong and they can take a lot. So just a thin coat of glue like that is fine. Um, latex paint. Don't use really stinky, smelly, like oil paint with a lot of solvents and stuff in it, but just the stuff that you would paint the inside of your house with, you can use that as well. I use this stuff, it's grafting wax, and really all this is is a thick latex paint. So it's really not much difference than this anyway. 
So finally we need to tag this. My favorite thing for tagging is this stuff. This is an aluminum printing plate. So you can get these from old school printers, which are fast disappearing. And usually you can get a whole stack of them for like scrap price. They're really good for protecting your tree trunks from uh, mice and voles and rabbits. And they make great tags. And I use them for all, for all kinds of other stuff too. So I cut them on a paper cutter into these little tags. But they are very easy to cut with scissors. They're made from aluminum, so they're not going to destroy your scissors. They might dull them, but you can just sharpen them later. You can write on these with pencil. And that will actually stay for years. I don't know what it is. It's something about this coating on the plate, but it'll actually eat into the coating. It'll be there for many, many years. I have tags 10 years old and you can still read the pencil on them. You can punch holes in them easily. Uh, this is just a sharp stylus. You could use a nail and scratch the name in too, just for good measure. The other thing that works is any kind of aluminum a uh, can lid or soda cans. This is um, a sardine can, cat food can lids. Uh, again, soda cans are good. The thicker they are, the better because they will kind of wear out as they blow around in the wind. And um, the wire will kind of eventually wear, wear a hole through. And for these, you have to scratch the name in for sure. For wire, I just strip out uh, pieces of scrap copper wire that has multiple strands like this. I've also taken old uh, copper transformers and unwound them. Uh, I've never bought new wire to tag trees and I've made thousands and thousands of tags. So this works very well. And we have our tree. We didn't have to buy anything that wasn't already laying around the house. And we can plant this in the ground and our tree will grow and make us fruit. Isn't that cool? Don't accessorize. You don't need to. Um, get started, you know, right away with just whatever you have around and then buy what you need later if you need anything at all, because you probably don't. If you're gonna end up getting serious about grafting, you can accessorize later. Uh, look forward to my new grafting series which is going to be a pretty comprehensive multi-video series on dormant grafting of fruit trees made possible by my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for giving me the time to finally get this uh, video project off the ground because I think it's really important to have this out there. I just wanted to do this video separately because um, it is kind of a separate topic and just to get people started right away and get them thinking and help people to realize that grafting doesn't need to be this intimidating thing that you need to buy a bunch of stuff for. Uh, that's kind of like the modern world. We think the first thing we think is like, oh, we're going to do something new. What do we need to buy? And unfortunately, a lot of people enjoy that part too much. They're like, what can I buy? What do I get to buy? And then start shopping and reading and all that stuff. Well, I'm here to tell you, don't buy anything if you don't have to. Find what knife you have that's gonna work and sharpen it. If you need to buy a knife, hey, consider buying a $19 Swiss Army knife that's gonna be a great pocket knife and do all kinds of other things for you and will absolutely, absolutely make any graft that you need to make. If you're starting an orchard, if you're planning to do a lot of grafting, sure, go ahead and buy a jar of Doc Farwell's grafting seal. And all the stuff I'm talking about is in my Amazon store on skillcult.com. As usual, I prefer that you do for yourself instead of buying things. But if you need to buy things, you can buy them through there and support me that way. Okay, look forward to that series. It's coming. It's going to be good.